Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going well, man. How are you doing? You know, I almost didn't have to read that, like that little intro I've had written down inside of a notepad file on my desktop for a long time. And I, I had it open, but I don't think I read any of it. So I can memorize two sentences now. So today's a good day. Awesome. <laughs> yes. And today is a good day because we're also going to be talking about care plans with Mr. Care Plan, Mr. Jeffrey Patch. Hello and good morning, Jeffrey. How are you doing today? Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Matt. How are you guys? I'm good. Thanks. Awesome. We did. We did have. We have several viewer questions, but we did have uh, one person tell us to ask you how it is to, or how how it feels to live in California and run a badass WordPress maintenance company. So we'll start off with that. Uh, you guys just opened a can of worms on that one right there, <laughs> right out the gate. <laughs> I'm, this is total a total segue already. First question, but. I love living in California. It is like my favorite thing in the entire world. I've visited all over. I've traveled all over the world. I've been to a lot of cool places. I don't mean that to brag. I just mean I've seen some places. This is where I choose to live. I love it. That said, just it's so expensive here right now. And everyone said that my whole life and I kind of rolled my eyes. And now that I'm an adult with a family and try, you know, trying to buy a home and stuff, it's like, what the, how are we ever going to survive here? So uh, it's a funny time that this question is asked because we're kind of considering other options right now mm, and really? maybe looking at some other places and states, but uh, I don't know how serious we are about it, but, but yeah, so. Thanks, thanks for bringing up some sore subjects. <laughs> well, <laughs> whoever asked that question. Yeah, whoever Matt Davies asked that. Yeah, I actually, I, we've talked about it. I, I grew up not too far from where you live now. And uh, we, we've we gone back to visit a few times. And man, you get used to prices in, in rural Texas and California seems astronomical. Yeah, we were just looking in Oregon and a nice area of Oregon. And, you know, the houses are about 50%. Of the price Man, and yeah. and they're uh, you know way nicer and you know yeah, but but it's not california you don't have the beach and well i guess you do in oregon so there, there goes my geography area. skills <laughs> right <laughs> it just makes it tough moving back to a lot of new englanders that uh that go down south they they end up never coming back because it's you can't buy a house like once you buy one somewhere else yeah so so we'll see you know we're for now we're going to keep uh, working our butts off and uh, you know doing 90 hour weeks and not stressing about it <laughs> not stressing 90 hours a week. <laughs> not getting gray hair you know right. no doubt well wh why don't uh that, that was a good opener but why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh and your company and what you do yeah so um i identify as an agency owner and i've been doing that for um you know well, web design and all that fun stuff for like 20 years more or less um a few years ago i started to see that the um the ongoing maintenance what which we now of course are calling care plans all the time was really required by a bunch of the websites that we were building for different you know agencies i was working with and, and none of them were doing it and i kind of kept telling everybody hey we need to put people on you know monthly retainers and you know I, we didn't have a cool name for it but we, you know i kept trying to figure it out and all of these agencies were just kind of like rolling their eyes like no we just need to sell more web projects we need to sell more web projects and so some of them were nice enough to let me take a few of them said hey if you want to do that great you know um and so i did and i started building the you know the framework to build a business around it and uh, about four years later most of those agencies are gone and uh, maintain press has sprouted up. And so we do white label maintenance and support for agencies and freelancers. Um, we've got agency partners of, of all sizes from, you know, they've got one or two clients to a hundred plus. Um, and we handle all of the basically care plan business, whether it's just ongoing maintenance, uh, constant, you know, content updates, uh, as well as some type of, uh, you know, PSD builds, or we do a few Beaver Builder and Page Builder type builds for clients. But for the most part, we're just trying to enable our uh, customers to be able to offer care plans at good prices and, uh, you know, be able to do it without a lot of uh, investment on their part. Yeah, and that's awesome. And today we're going to be talking a lot about kind of scaling care plans, because I think when, you, when you're when you handling one or two, that's probably not so so difficult. When you get up to 10 or 20, then you start seeing how much your week is being eaten up by some of these tasks. And then I imagine, I'm not there yet, so I don't know, but I imagine when you get to 50 or 100, then, you know, the, the, the bank account looks good, but then kind of all you're doing is 
maintaining websites. So there's a really good opportunity to find somebody like a Jeffrey Patch who could come in and uh, take care of all that for you. So uh, there's obviously a point when that, that would make sense for an agency. And for some people that just don't like maintaining websites or care plans don't seem fun to them. They like making new things. You know, like he's, like Jeffrey said, he's got clients that start out with, you know, one website that they hand over to him. Uh, so it works for everybody, which is a pretty neat deal. And I know I've recommended Jeffrey about a bazillion times online. So let's, and I uh, let's appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. it's not a problem. Buddy. <laughs> uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the pricing factor. So, you know, we, we just rela released a care plan related product. Uh, and we had a lot of the questions people had about this is, you know, how do we go about pricing our care plan. So I imagine you have to come up with a, you know, a kind of standard set of pricing for what you offer for your business, but what your partners, agency partners are charging people probably varies. So you probably see a wide range of things. You know, where, where do you see the typical maintenance thing, updating plugins, security backups, those types of things you would see in any general care plan. What kind of price ranges do you see are typical for those things? Yeah, you, you said wide range, and that is a very, very good description because um, I obviously won't share anybody's you know too personal details or who they are, but I know that um, our highest uh, priced care plan that one of our agency partners sells, and it's essentially just you know a rebrand of our package. Not that they don't uh, you know maybe do some more with the client on the side or you know have a few phone calls here and there, but their care plan is fifteen hundred dollars a month. And they have like six or seven people on it, which is awesome. You know, they, they go for high price uh, clients. Um, I'd say on the average, though, for a maintenance only plan, you know, not uh, not handling a bunch of extra work for them, just kind of doing the day to day, keeping everything you know up to date, running smoothly and secure. Uh, the average cost I see is between about 75 to 150 on the high end a month. Um, and obviously we've, you know, I won't go into all of our pricing, but we have white label pricing, so it's so affordable to do that. But, but regardless, whether you do it with us, or you do it directly, I think about 75 to around 125 is a pretty fair assessment on that. Well, it seems um, to be the case. Yeah. I want to be careful not recommending prices too much too. People can kind of get into, uh, you know, I don't know what they call it. When you're trying to monopolize the industry or, or whatever with prices. That's not the case at all, but that is what I see. Um, and, and, you know, what we do see some people come around and say, Oh, we, you know, we only charge our clients $25. And I say, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't mean to be a jerk, but you know, it's just hard to profit off of that. And, and like you said, once you start getting, you know, five or 10 clients, it's a lot of work. And when you realize you're only making $250 a month on those, it doesn't add up. Yeah. And you know, everybody kind of gets up in arms about pricing stuff, care plans, websites, you know, you name it, you know, your, your pricing is your pricing. You know, you got to look at who your customers are, what they're willing to pay, the kind of service you provide them, what your marketing looks like, what your experience is. There's a lot of things that can go into pricing. So for somebody to just come in and say, hey, you have to charge $200 for a care plan, period. You know, you look at a small company like me, a company of one, uh, and what I offer my care plan is 90% automated. I could be profitable with it for probably pretty cheap. Uh, but I don't I, I'd rather make some more, you know, so it depends on your company setup too. If you have a bunch of employees and overhead and, and things going into it, that makes a difference on what your pricing is. So just figure out your own pricing. How about that? Yeah. You don't have to be greedy, but you do need to be profitable. And I think it's Troy Dean. I've heard him say a bunch of times that you owe it to your clients to be profitable. You know, so if you're, if you're stretching everything thin and, and you know, and you can't make any money, you're going to go out of business. So, you know, you need to make sure that you're profiting and able to be there for your clients. Absolutely. Um, I guess we should also probably say we're, we're all in the United States. So we're kind of probably looking at typical small business clients that we would see in our local area that kind of fit these descriptions. Obviously, you know, depending on your country, that range could be, you know, vastly different too. So, right. So we, we said a little bit on, on automation, how much of my care plan stuff is automated. Um, I imagine as you scale a, in a, a set of clients on care plans, the automation side of it becomes more and more important to make sure it's not eating up your day. So what are the, what are the kinds of things you found that automation really helps save you time in as far as running a, a maintenance package for a client? Ooh, automation. I love geeking out about Zapier and all that fun <laughs> stuff. Um, 
By the way, I heard something recently. Zapier makes you happier. If everybody doesn't know if it's Zapier or Zapier, Zapier rhymes with happier is what they said. Okay. Nice. Now we can remember. <laughs> I heard that someone I was like, brain, like my mind just exploded. It's wow. like GIF for GIF. Yeah, I don't. I still can't get that one. I Zapier realize. makes you happier. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Kyle ruining all their branding, all their efforts. Um, Automation, it helps in a lot of different ways. I think our biggest one, and it's kind of fitting that we're recording this on the first of the month today, is, our, is the monthly reports. So we have our monthly maintenance reports go out on the first. And and right, I mean, before I actually did all of that manually, started having an assistant do that manually. And then, because I was paranoid about it, I didn't want the wrong ones going out or, you know, I want to check every single one. But eventually we got that system down and now those go out on the first automatically. And that's a pretty simple one. But, you know, now sending several hundred of them, it would just be, you know, mind blowing. So now all we have to do is archive several hundred auto responses instead, <laughs> which is what I was doing all morning. Uh, <laughs> but uh, with, uh, with Zapier, you know, I do a lot in our um, project management system. We do ClickUp um, and they're actually kind of expanding that API, which I'm excited about. But right now, the biggest Zap I have that saves me time is knowing when something goes into review. So when any, any of our staff needs anything QA or anything reviewed, I get like seven notifications so it doesn't get missed. <laughs> So we use actually automation rather not to make everything easier, but to make it foolproof or to make it safe and secure. That makes um, a lot of sense. It's just, you know, backup to your backup to your backup is the way I look at it. And so we'd never want to drop the ball. Um, and so that's, that's the one I've been doing recently. Um, what are some of the other ones? I think the rest are probably more around marketing related coming in, um, you know, with emails and making sure people get on the right list and into the right, um, uh, the right category in our CRM and things like that. Um, but then the other one would be from our ticketing system too. We can pipe those in, um, nothing too fancy there, you know, pretty much all, all email and ticketing systems have some sort of automation with Zapier or with the project management system to sync them in there. But, um, you know, all those, and then of course, everything's tied to Slack. Everything, we all get notified in Slack a million times a day to make sure we're on top of everything coming in all day long. So, I can't, I can't hang with Slack. It's too much for me. My <laughs> brain is just at capacity. I can't do it. I've tried, I've tried three or four times and I can't do it. Yeah. Are you, are you a, a main WP guy or a managed WP guy? Or how do you go about handling and managing all these different installs? Yeah. Yeah. We're managed WP, but I do have a main WP license. And actually, um, one of the, uh, we actually, um, took over an agency's entire roster of last year and they were all in main WP. Hmm. Uh, we can acquire them, I guess I should say. And they were all in main WP and it had just, it was so painful to use and, and you know, all these problems. And um, I don't know if it was a server environment or what it was, but we just said, you know, let's stick with what we know and let's, let's bring them all into our, our system that we're using now, which is, like I said, managed WP. Um, Lately, I'm sure you've seen some of the, <laughs> the talks lately. There's been some managed WP issues with um, backups and a few other connection things. And so I'm not committing that we're switching, but we're entertaining main WP again. I brushed off that license and setting it up on a new install. And uh, we're going to test it and see if it would work better for us. I, I'm hopeful, but I'm not going to make this decision lightly. <laughs> Yeah, and they just released, you know, main WP just released a lot of updates too. It's I've never used managed WP. I've just the first time I ever set up this type of system was main WP and it worked fine for me. So I've just never explored anything else. But I can't I can't imagine trying to scale care plans without having a system like that in place to to give you one central place to to look at all these installs, right? Oh, I, it's impossible. And I, we've got so many clients that have come over, whether they've signed up with us directly or they were from an agency partner that had a quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, nobody can see me, uh, web developer maintaining their stuff. And you, you know, you log in and it's WordPress like 4.9 and, and there's, you know, where for ref time reference, we're at 5.2.3 right now. Um, you know, so yeah, it's just like, no one was ever doing anything. You know, how, how much were you paying them? 25 bucks a month. Right. And that's why <laughs> <laughs> at, at 25 bucks a month, you can't really make much profit just using like managed WPs, couple core features. I mean, you make a couple dollars, but so yeah. Right. And um, so go ahead. Well, I was just going to go into some of the questions, but if you had something, yeah, go for it. Yeah, no. Um, so Kay had asked, uh, do you always uh, do updates on staging sites first or are you more of a daredevil? Do you just, Ooh, we're updates? daredevils. Um, daredevils. 
I mean, there's there's arguments for both sides for sure, but um, and kind of like oh. going into that is. Uh, the uh, Jean Francois had asked, uh, "What procedures do you have in place to double check that all of the features work after a site update?" Yeah, so let's look at this too in the context of we're talking about scaling, and when you get you know a larger number, I imagine trying to go through and put every site on a staging server, do updates one at a time, and then check everything on the website is damn near impossible. So, yeah. uh, especially as you go to scale, how do you approach these risks? And there was a time I did exactly that, but that was when I had like, you know, 10 direct clients. Um, I mean, that is the best way to do it. Let's, we all, we all know that, um, you just can't, you just can't at a certain point. So, and I, and I was reading those comments earlier. I don't have them up in front of me, but, um, somebody mentioned, I think, uh, be uh, reading the change logs of being, a you know, kind of abreast of what's happening in the WordPress world. And so that's something that I really take seriously and knowing what we're updating. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's easy enough to go in and click update all and walk away and come back in an hour and you're good. Uh, that's dangerous though. Obviously, you know, most times nothing's going to happen, but it can. And when it does, you may not even notice if you weren't paying attention. So, yeah. And I mean, where, where like the, the individual, if, if Kyle and I, you know, we have our stacks that we use and we we're fairly like, you know, knowledgeable about what the, uh, the updates bring, on in your position where you're taking over uh, sites and and providing care to those, I can imagine they're built with hundreds of thousands of different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, just just like you know, using using a, a certain stack definitely helps. But how do you uh, how do you manage that with all of those plugins out there? Yeah, that's tough. And but you had a good point there that using a stack is really nice. So for the ones we built, that's nice. You know, that kind of checks off a lot of boxes because like 80% of the sites that we've built or, you know, the agency partners we work closely with have built are very similar day in and day out. So that's nice. But then there is that like 20% of just maverick coding going on some of these sites. And um, the best way is to be extra, extra careful and not updated if you're not sure yet. So um, there are a few instances when we can tell right off the bat, this is a fragile environment and we will, we'll, we'll have to, you know, there's just no choice. We're going to have to set up a staging server. Hopefully they've got a hosting system that allows us to do that conveniently. If not, you know, we're, we're migrating in and it's a lot of work, but, but sometimes that's what we got to do. Um, the biggest one I've seen, the biggest example I've seen of this totally like failing or this, you know, these issues coming to light is with theme forest themes and i don't want to single any one out or any you know you know even just theme forest no it's okay you can <laughs> <laughs> i know everybody hey everybody Nobody here something. is offended by that comment <laughs> uh, you know they might be i don't want to get any of us sued but um, so we won't ever be sponsored by theme forest then. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is, you know, we're getting to a whole kind of another can of worms here, but the reality is when you build themes, like you sell on there, where they are everything to everybody, people do whatever they want to them. And mm -hmm. so we've seen people where they edit the theme directly. They didn't use a child theme, you know, and then they go, oh yeah, here's the license. Go ahead and update the theme. It's, it needs to be updated and everything's gone. Um, or the, uh, you know, the visual composer update doesn't work with, you know, this version of WordPress, all kinds of that stuff. And so one thing we tend to learn because some of those do updates do happen and you really don't know until it happens, whether it's on staging or, you know, live site. Um, and then we make note and we keep those notes throughout the future. So when we get another site that comes on and says, Hey, look, it's on, you know, this five year old theme forest theme and all these old visual composer plugins, we know, Hey, we already have some info on that. We've already experienced that and uh, we're not going to make that mistake. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think the point of having, a stack that you feel comfortable with is, is for me, the thing that gives me the most, um, confidence when I hit update all, cause I, I'm a, I'm an update all kind of guy, uh, <laughs> is I know what's inside of every one of these websites. Um, a lot of times I, I don't keep my website in main WP and I will update my site first. My site's got mainly the same things that other sites do. And if mine breaks, then I know, Hey, let's check something out. Um, but I mean, the the biggest remedy to all of this is if you got a lot of good backups, then yeah, I was just your, gonna say your backups. risk is a lot lower. Yep. Your risk of everything is a lot lower when you have a bunch of backups. You know, your risk of security breaches, of updating something and it breaking the site. You know, the worst case scenario, if you're keeping good backups, 
uh, and you do an update all and everything breaks, you just have to go restore some backups. So it's like, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's, it's really not. I mean, it is inconvenient and, uh, you know, worst case scenario, a, a client site goes down for a couple of minutes. They're probably not stoked if they even noticed. Mm -hmm. Um, but in addition to just a lot of backups, I mean, well, I guess it's the same thing, but um, we do a backup immediately before the updates as well. So even though they're on a daily schedule, which just happens around the middle of the night, um, you know, if we're doing an update at five o'clock in the afternoon or whatever reason, we still do manage WP calls at a safe update. I'm sure all the other ones have a similar, um, similar thing, but we'll do the safe update. So it has a very, very fresh backup. And, and that's really important, especially if it's something like a WooCommerce site where, mm. you know, order data might be coming in throughout the day. Right. Or Most like websites or, yeah. yeah, I'd say probably 90% of websites we manage, you know, don't have any changing, you know, content to the database every day. So that's not a big deal, but you know, you always want to be as safe as possible. So where do you see the biggest uh, shift for, you know, especially small agencies or agencies of one, uh, where does that kind of tilt happen where I'm doing fine handling all these on my own? Like I said, I'm probably at, I don't know, I think there's 30 something sites connected to my main WP uh, and I feel okay with that right now. Where do you think the shift is where somebody that that doesn't mind handling it all on their own but where they're going to need some help have you have you been able to pinpoint kind of where that breaks and to add to that too like is there anything to be aware of when you do start scaling to larger numbers like things to look out for yeah you know we actually did a lot of research and we found that 42 was the exact number that once you hit 42, you find that you're overwhelmed and stressed. It's a, it's a psychological thing that, no, I'm, I'm totally joking. And it wasn't, man, really I was about to say <laughs> perfect timing, huh? You got me signing up already. <laughs> no, you know, everyone's different. So I think it's going to be, you know, your level of comfort just in general with handling that many clients. So I'm, I mean, I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong by any means. You're, you're crushing no, perfect. Every, no, everybody knows Kyle Van Dusen out there is just, you know, he's like, what happened in the last two years? This guy has done so much. Um, but you've got a really healthy roster of clients for, for being a solopreneur. Um, but like you said, you're comfortable and you're technical enough to, to handle all of that. Some people may not be, some people may stress when a hosting issue comes around. Um, some people might not be comfortable touching any PHP. So when those problems pop up, um, you know, a, a big part of me as like the sales guy wants to say, right from the beginning, we want to support you. And you know, if that fits great, but it may not, you may, you know, you may not need to be outsourcing anything yet. Yeah, um, I mean, look at, look at the kind of business you want to build. If doing maintenance is part of something you want to build, then cool, do it. And if, exactly. if you realize you like building websites and not maintaining them, then yeah, start off with, with Jeffrey right away. Well, a couple of years ago, that's exactly what I said to myself here. You know, I was, um, I was in WP Elevation and I was trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life, quote unquote. You know, I mean, it's like I've been building websites, but it wasn't my main business and I've been doing it for so long, but I've just been dabbling in so many things. And and I knew that I'd bit this off. And if I focused on it, I could run the business I want to run. And that's, you know, growing the team, scaling and, and creating a productized service that is predictable and scalable. I mean, that's what I want to do. That's the business owner I want to be. So that's, you know, that's the groundwork we've laid and it's been, you know, going really well. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what your, you know, niche is or what your focus is, but uh, we all, I think it's safe to say we all believe in recurring revenue. We all want to add it in there and you just have to kind of, you know, take a little look at it and decide on what fits best for you and where you want to go. And uh, I think scaling anything with a recurring model is the fastest way to scale. The safest Absolutely. way to scale. So, um, so like, Kind of, kind of exploring that a little bit more. By the way, that if you do uh, end up going over forty-two, it's best to always pack a towel. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody that got that joke. Um, but uh, I, no, I, what? I, I uh, didn't, what? Like, but it sounds so random that I'm going to Google it later. <laughs> <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, uh, but uh, like, what would a standard? I mean, you you must have seen a ton of different care plan packages out there. Like, what what would you say is a standard package? And what are things that people can add to that package to potentially, you know, like upsell a little bit? Yeah. Um, actually funny, there are so many different packages out there and I think they're like 99% identical. So it's, it's kind of amusing when everybody says, I've put my care plans and, you know, and everyone's going to come sign up for them. They're probably not. <laughs> right. It, people are, unfortunately, they're not coming out of the woodwork to just sign up for, for care plans and maintenance. And I can even say that 
from, from our view, you know, we get a decent amount of traffic. We get a lot of agencies, but we don't get that many random websites, even though we're open to them. We don't get that many random, you know, small business owners. So I think the first thing is, is having those, um, it's, it's not an upsell, but having those conversations from the very beginning, when the, if you're building the website project is super important. Um, and then yeah, having upsells or added value adds is, is massive. So one of the things that we've done with our local clients, which again, it's not our main focus, but you know, we make sure we take care of them as good as possible here. And we kind of can't say no when, you know, someone's not literally, we live in a pretty small town. So, you know, someone's knocking door, Hey, we need a website for this pizza shop. All right. You know, <laughs> we get free pizza. Cool. We're in, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, but any, with, with a care plan, you are like, you are so presented or you're, ah, darn it. What's the word I'm looking for, but you're in the perfect position to help them more to help them further than just maintaining their website. So, you know, if you're a social media guy, if, if your agency does social media work, it's a perfect segue into doing social media work. Um, if it, you know, if we're just focusing on the care plan, uh, there's, you know, SEO reports that you could do and or SEO, you know, work that you can do. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I started messing with that. If anybody uses managed WP, they have a SEO ranking thing and, and most people ignore it. But if you know a couple of the keywords your clients are ranking for, or trying to rank for, even if you're not doing SEO and you put that in a report and they see, you know, their work is working or not working, there's more opportunity for, um, for additions and, you know, value adds there. Um, I mean, and the other thing is just kind of being available for things. We've had very interesting projects come around, like producing a podcast for a medical client. I mean, it was not our industry at all, but next thing you know, we're producing a podcast for a medical client and okay, cool. I mean, you know, when you, when you work with clients ongoing in any fashion, your the options are endless sometimes. Yeah. You stay in front of them all the time, which helps. Yeah. So in those, really? those lists of, uh, like, you know, standard package type stuff, like has anything ever crossed your desk that you, you've like looked at and said, wow, that's super smart. I'm like, why doesn't more people offer this in uh, in a care plan? Oh boy. Good question. Off the top of my head. Um, you know, actually recently, or not too long ago, had a client, an agency partner, to kind of say what he was expecting out of the service. And I thought, wow, okay, because no one's really told me that. And when we're, we're at this point, we're pretty darn established. But <laughs> there were a couple of things he really wanted to know. And and this might sound really silly, but like broken link checkers. And we've we've avoided using those because, I mean, even the, um, was it a WP engine, rather, they wouldn't allow them because they're very server taxing. Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen that. So a couple of years ago, we honestly just kind of stopped doing broken link checking ongoing, unless it was a site we were launching right away. And so we started doing that with a handful of clients and noticing, oh, wow, these people, the ones that blog a lot are the mm -hmm. ones that are affected by this. Right. You know, a five page brochure site, nothing's going to change, no problem. But the ones that blog a lot and they link out to websites that come and go. And so we started doing that and realized, server taxing but we got to find a way to <laughs> to manage to do this on you know maybe like a weekly basis or something so that's a new thing that we're implementing and it's and you know like you said things come across your desk and you go ah oh, my eyes are open i'm really glad that <laughs> right i'm really glad i was able to, to see that and you know learn from it because you know no one's ever perfect and nothing's ever finished right yeah, no, that's that's one of the things that I absolutely love about, you know, the admin bar is that I see posts from people that, you know, they're just like, hey, I just did this thing. And I look at them like, that's brilliant. It's super, like, you know, simple. But that's, that's awesome. And like, you know, I learn a ton just seeing how other people work. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, I mean, I've learned, I'm, I feel like I, I'm, I'm not the care plan expert. I'm not this guy. But you know, I feel like I probably do have a little bit more experience in it than most. But then, you know, your guys' uh, website owner's manual last week or a couple weeks ago. It's like, why the heck wasn't I doing something like that before for <laughs> years? Do you know how many more I would have sold, you know, for those those tire kickers that left? I mean, what a, that what a great idea. And so, you know, that's becoming part of our process and it's probably become, you know, part of at least half the admin bars process. And yeah, that's an amazing thing about sharing all of our resources and tools and, and findings. Absolutely. Yeah, we were stoked about how receptive everyone was to, I mean, like I said, we, when we launched the website owner's manual back in like April, it was just like a lead magnet thing we were giving away for free. And there was some good response and it was probably the best lead magnet we had ever done uh, as far as how many signups and stuff we got. Um, but man, me and Matt just started using it on our own and seeing so much results from it. We're like, ah, I don't think everybody got like, 
quote unquote got what we were trying to do with this and and repackaging it and putting everything together with the scripts and everything. Uh, we've been getting tons of messages about people people using it with success. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome. I'm excited to hear you're like, using it. Yeah, I've got a list of like 10 people that I'm going to send it out to to see if I can, you know, bring it back because, awesome. uh, you know, yeah, ones that, you know, built the website and then they just for whatever reason, let it go. And I recently I've seen some of them starting to log in there and dust things off. And it's like, okay, it's time to uh, have this conversation again. And let's, you know, let's try to enable you for success with your website. So why don't, uh, before we wrap up here today, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, exactly how Maintain Press works. And if people are listening to this and they're interested in the service you offer, maybe they're the kind of person that doesn't want to mess with this, or maybe they have 41 care plans and they're <laughs> deathly scared of what's going to happen at number 42. Uh, tell us a little bit about how your process works, how you work with other agencies, packages you offer, uh, all those awesome things. Yeah. So, you know, like I've said, I, this is a productized service. We've tried to make our plans really simple, really affordable, and just, you know, they, I, we can always customize things for people, but for the most part, they are what they are. And, and hopefully they fit perfectly with your, uh, your business. Um, we basically do two plans. That's a maintenance plan, which is kind of the bare bones essentials we consider for, um, for websites. And that's priced so darn low that I think it's a no brainer for anybody to be offering whether you're working with us or just, you know, selling that to clients. Um, and then we also have the total care plan, which is essentially, like I said, white labeling your care plan. We have a white label support inbox. So your clients can email in to us directly, but they're emailing you. They're saying support at, you know, your Um, we can collaborate with you on that as well. If that's something you still want to participate in. And we, uh, pretty much have everything on the website. So just check out maintain.press. You can sign up directly there, or if you want to, you know, use a little chat box or send me a message, we can chat about things. If you have, um, substantial amounts of clients and, you know, need different billing systems or something, we can always handle that too. But for the most part, everything's easy to just sign up on the website and go. So let me ask you a little bit about how, how this works when you talked about, uh, kind of the whole white label approach. Uh, I think, I probably wouldn't be the only one that would be a little nervous saying, yeah, okay, customers, go ahead and email this other guy that, <laughs> I mean, I like you, Jeffrey, but I'd feel a little weird just sending my clients to you. So what kind of percentage of your clients do that? And how have you seen that actually work in real life? Because I know I'm probably being a little uh, just overly worried about something like that. You know, actually, I really appreciate that you said that because the one thing I don't want to do is rush into that relationship with the wrong agency partner or the wrong fit. So we actually, regardless of the size of your agency and how many clients you're bringing over, we actually say for the first month, we're going to work directly with you or your, you know, your point of contact in your company, whatever it is. And that's to establish you know, the ground rules, to establish communication, to just make sure everyone's on the same page, just avoid any issues. Um, yeah, it's just it, I like it better safe than sorry. Some people get a little frustrated with me for being too cautious, but you know, <laughs> I'm like, Hey, <laughs> this is the way we're doing it. Um, and uh, let's see, what was I going to say about that? But but yeah, so the first month kind of gives us some time to you know figure each other out, make sure we're all on the same page. And about 80%, actually, I think of the clients right now are all into a white label system like that. A few of them, they, you know, it just depends on relationships. They talk to maybe the business owner and the business owner wants to you know, translate things or approve them first. But, um, but our, for the most part, I think uh, the best system is being able to just simply email in and have all that in, you know, have that uh, direct contact available. Um, so what about like the, the, you talked about doing monthly reports, are those reports going directly out to the end owner of the website or the agency partners in the middle getting those and resending them? Or how does that kind of work? Either or most of them go directly to the clients, but a few of them, they like it directly. A few agency partners like it directly just to actually some of them take it and then they bring it into a more elaborate report for the other services to do it. Hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why we send it directly to them. So they get, you know, they obviously put a presentation together every month and, and they just use that information as part of their, their larger package. Uh, but for the most part, they go directly to the clients and uh, you know, for every, every time we usually get, Hey, thanks. This is awesome. Or every six months we go, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> they either delete them or they read it in fine print, which is really funny. But <laughs> so I imagine too, um, there's, you're dealing with a lot of end customers, which that must be real fun. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm super jealous of you there. Um, but you're dealing with a lot of companies, you know, in the range of having one care plan to having tons of care plans. Uh, this, 
this kind of goes off of just your experience, but what are the things, have you been able to pick up on anything that people that have signed up a lot more care plans or have a bigger roster, things that they're doing that the people that struggle to get more care plans aren't doing? Ooh, they're focused. Really, I, and that sounds really generic, generic, but I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of our um, fastest growing care plans and they're focused and they are, if not perfect yet, they're systemizing their system, their processes as much as possible. So obviously the easiest care plan sale is a website you're, you're building. And you know, so they're the ones that are pumping out the most websites. They have either a team or that's actually not the case for all of them. Some of them are solopreneurs that are growing just as fast as them faster, actually. Um, but everything is, you know, very prostituted. or process. Prostit you know the word I'm trying to say. <laughs> prostituted. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. They're all prostitutes. <laughs> Napier makes you happier. Oh boy. Prosticize. <laughs> is that a word? I don't know. I'm going back to English school, but um, we just but make yeah, websites just, for a living, so we're not going to judge you. Mm -mm. Yeah, right. We, you know, we just write all day long. We should know this English language. Um, but, but no, that's it. You know, they've got the systems in place, and they're and they're doing it. So uh, for them, I know every. It's like an, it's not even a question. And it kind of goes for our agency too. When you build a website, it goes onto a care plan, or at least a you know a, a hosting plan or whatnot. And if you, um, or in my case, if we're hearing rejections to that or objections to that at the very beginning, we know it's probably not a good fit. And so I think other people are picking up on that as well these days and saying, you know, I can charge a little bit less for the website, but I know I'm going to have a care plan going. And so they're having those conversations at the very beginning. And that's what I'm seeing with a few of our partners that are growing the fastest. Another thing that just came to mind too, and now I'm just like kind of scatter shooting all over the place here, but I know I've heard a lot of people have objections. The, some of the people that have objections to doing care plans, a common objection to that is they don't want to be on call all the time for their customers. And especially when you talk about if hosting is part of your care plan, which for me it is because I think that's the easiest way to get them into my care plan is mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to host the website for you. Um, so I think people are afraid, even if they're not doing hosting, that the client's going to be calling them at nine o'clock at night or, you know, bugging them all day. So uh, how, do, how do you look at that objection? Yeah, well, the first um, thing to say is work with a white label partner. <laughs> you you know, I mean, Keep I'm, Jeffrey but, up at nine o'clock at night. Yeah, selfishly. But no, honestly, though, I mean, that is the best thing. It, and it, you're going to have to have either a team that you outsource to or a team that you have eventually one way or the other, I think, unless you're just building websites, handing off and saying goodbye. But if you want that recurring revenue, you're going to have to figure out a system. So whether that's you being available or you having, you know, a team or an outsource partner available, the opportunities are there. So, I mean, I, I, I think it's crazy not to have any sort of recurring revenue opportunities, but I do understand people's objections. Thankfully, there's there's definitely avenues to remedy that. Yeah, and I know uh, I, I want to say your pricing isn't just listed straight out on your website, and we weren't going into specifics on all that. But let's let me find a workaround to this question. <laughs> so we talked earlier about kind of the average price people charge for care plans, right? And we said you know somewhere between the seven, seventy-five to one hundred and fifty dollar range is pretty typical. So if somebody was charging that, how much of a percentage of their their care plan? revenue that they're getting would have to go to a white label partner in theory. <laughs> I don't think I got those numbers correct. <laughs> I inputted those numbers in my brain correctly to do the math. So I'll just say our pricing is. <laughs> <laughs> See, I tried to go all reporter style and like get really around the question. I mean, I, what I'm asking, if you, if you rather talk with people and I understand you like having that co uh, conversation with people before price is the determining factor. I mean, are, are we saying if, if I'm selling a, a hundred, dollar care plan am i losing half of that to you am i losing a quarter of it to you am i losing three quarters of it to you yeah well okay so our maintenance is 35 bucks and then the total care is 80 dollars, and that's as of uh, october 2019 um uh, 2020 will definitely be going up a little bit but um so yeah i mean our, our pricing is behind a, a little sign up you just have to put in your email for your accounts nothing major but yeah, it's 35 bucks or 80 for the total care plan. Nobody listens uh, to this show, so it's cool. I figured, yeah. I mean, but no, we're, no, like, no, just... <laughs> we're like 40 minutes into this. There's nobody <laughs> listening. Well, it's funny to hear that because I started doing that a couple months ago and it's actually really 
it's eliminated like the tire kickers and it's mm -hmm. created a lot more opportunities for conversation just to have mm -hmm. that little sign up. I've got a couple of messages like, I don't want to sign up for anything. I'm like, all right, then don't <laughs> here's the pricing. I'll still tell you <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, but yeah, we did put that behind a paywall. So it's funny that you said that. Yeah. thinking it was top secret <laughs> no no i I've, i figured you just wanted to get those people be able to have the real conversation with them because the same thing i don't publish prices for my website you know how much i charge to build a website on my website you know i want to have a conversation with somebody and and kind of that familiarity i think is important so i get it yeah, yeah. i just thought about testing it and seeing how it went and i'm actually enjoying the way it's it's going getting people to you know to opt in a little bit before they get that info i mean we have the direct pricing on there too so you can kind of see what the you know retail pricing might look like if you were to kind of just basically flip it and resell it essentially but but yeah so 35 dollars for the maintenance plan and that's what i was saying earlier that's kind of a what i call kind of a no-brainer essential sale for somebody you know, I mean, even at a minimum, if you charge the client fifty dollars just to make sure their client, their site was taken care of, you know, you're not profiting a lot, but at least you know you're making a few bucks and your client's being taken care of. And yeah. you're freeing up a bunch of your own time too, which I think is well worth that thirty-five dollars. Yeah, that's where the money is. There's it's no stress involved. Time. Like you just hand it over and you work on what you're supposed to be working on. If you don't want to handle care plans, focus on what you're best at. Exactly. No doubt. All right. Well, Matt, do you got anything to add to this before we wrap this up and get out of here today? No, I'm going to stop talking. I think my last uh, my last comment was good. Okay. <laughs> it's always good to end on a Ooh, high. mic drop. <laughs> and so, uh, Jeffrey, I know you you said the the website address, but let's repeat that. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of you if they're interested in finding out more. Yeah, the website is maintain.press. Yes, that's a little bit of a weird URL, but maintain.press. And um, you can also come and chat with us in the website Care Plan Mastery Group on Facebook, if that's okay that I plug that. Yeah, do Absolutely. it. Cool. Yeah, please pop in there. Uh, we've got a few hundred people in there. It's just starting to really grow, though. So we're trying to have more conversations about care plans and recurring revenue. So come on in and chat. Yeah, no doubt. And see, you you plugged the website owner's manual for us, so it's only fair I let you plug whatever. <laughs> I didn't even have to bring it up, so that's awesome. Well, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not the group isn't a huge focus, but it is um, it is really fun to make sure we're all kind of connected in a central place, and you know, be able to share some company insights behind a uh, a semi private wall. And have a few yeah. jokes at a poor clients expenses every now and then but uh, no doubt I kinda, a lot of love <laughs> I, I you know I, I am in way too many Facebook groups but I kind of like the Facebook groups that are very niched into a subject where I know if I have a question that falls in this category I can go there and there's a bunch of people that understand what I'm talking about so mm -hmm. yeah I think that's probably a smarter way than being a generalist so I like it I endorse it cool. go join the Thank group <laughs> go sign up with Jeffrey Jeffrey, I appreciate you uh, you joining us today. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. We've been meaning to have you on the show for a long time, so I'm glad that day is finally here. Well, I appreciate it, Kyle. Matt, I'm, thank you so much. I, I'm pretty sure last time I talked to you, you didn't have nicer guitars than mine hanging behind you, so I'm a little bit pissed yeah. that you showed off this time in front of me. Sorry. To be fair, I did sell all my nice guitars when we started having children, so <laughs> these are just like the runs that were left over that Guitar Center wouldn't even give me 50 ah. bucks for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Les Pauls are long gone. Well, they're all sparkly and nice, but uh, trust me, none of them are worth that much. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's certainly not worth anything when I pick it up and play it because it sounds like crap. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing like 25 years and I'm terrible. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channels or use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes very little time and it greatly helps support the show. That is all for now. We'll catch you inside the group. Bye-bye. All right. You ready? You got us recording? Yep. Probably recording this whole time while we say stupid shit. <laughs> oh, obviously, I was having no filter because I didn't see the recording thing on Zoom. But you're yeah. probably doing an OBS or something yeah, else. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Oops, there goes the outtakes. And... You're in trouble. Yeah, we need some sort of a stinger at the end.